Hello everyone and welcome to today's recording. In this recording I'll be showing how you can use Firebase with the REST API and read them using a GraphQL API with StepSend. So the first step in this is of course to go to the Firebase website which you can find at firebase.google.com and on this website you can find all the information to get started with Firebase. To actually get started you need to sign up with your Google account and once you have signed up with your Google account you will end up in the Firebase console. So the Firebase is the console to start your new Firebase project. You can simply click Add Project. And then the only thing you need to do is enter a name for your new project. It will try and enter some of the project names from things you might already have in your Google account. But of course, for this thing, we'll be doing steps and demo. It will ask us if we want to enable Google Analytics, which we don't. And then it starts creating your project. So while it is creating our project, let's have a look at why you should be using Firebase. So with Firebase, you can create databases, authentication, logging, monitoring, all these kinds of things for web applications, mobile applications, um, and even applications that you run on iOS devices. But it has one downside, the database that Firebase has, has a REST API, but it doesn't have a GraphQL API, meaning that every request you send to the REST API, or maybe you want to combine different REST API requests into one unified GraphQL request, that is something you cannot do out of the box. And that's why we are using Firebase together with StepSend to enable this feature uh, for your applications. So my new project is ready. I can just press enter and the Firebase console will bring me to my demo project. As I said, there's Tons of things you can do here. You can create an app for iOS, Android, for the web, also with Unity or Flutter. So there's tons of choices to create an app with Flutter. And as I said, they have a database. They have multiple sorts of database, actually. They also have a Firestore database, which is just as the real-time database that we'll be using today is a NoSQL database. But today we'll be using the real-time database. Why? Because the REST API is nicer. It gives us more features. And also the real-time database is set up to work um, both offline and online on multiple devices. So let's say you're building an iOS app that you also want to bring to the web or to Android. Then with the real-time database, you have the best of both places because you can also sync offline. When you press create a database, it will ask you where you want to set up your database. So you can select United States, Belgium, Singapore. Today we'll be going for United States. And then you have to choose between two different security methods. So you can either start in lock mode, which means reading and writing will require you to give an API access token, or you can start in test mode. So for this demo, we'll be using test mode because to set up an API key or an access token setup with Firebase, you need to use OAuth, meaning we also need to set up a front-end project. Today, we only will be creating a GraphQL API built with StepSend that works with the Firebase REST API. Then in a, second in a second video, we can go into the details of how to set up authentication with Firebase, but not today. So make sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be updated as soon as the next video drops that actually includes the authentication part as well. So today we'll be starting in test mode. So now my database will be created with Firebase uh, in just a few seconds. You can see we have a real-time database here. And this is all document-based. As I said before, it's a NoSQL database, meaning all the information in here is JSON. Um, we can actually import, export JSON, or you can just easily copy-paste it here or add some JSON using the GUI. But, especially for you, I already created a JSON file with information. So there are multiple things I can do. I can either copy-paste this JSON file from um, any of my editors and paste it here or I can just use the import export. So if you download the file that is inside the GitHub repository linked for this video, which you can find in the description, you can download the JSON file that you can easily drag and drop here to import. What you can also do is copy paste the contents of the JSON file and just paste them in here. So let me just go back. I'll be going to my database. I can go here. And I can just copy paste any JSON blob that I want to copy paste. Press enter. So this will upload the data I copied 
uh, from the GitHub repository linked to this video uh, inside my real-time database. As you can see here, there are customers. Customers are defined by a key. So the list in here are key value pairs. Uh, you can see they have an email and a name. And then you can see they also have orders. And orders are, there are a bit more orders in here. They have carrier created that. They also have a relationship with the customer. So later on, if I want to make combinations between a customer and the orders, I can use this ID to make the connection between them because this customer ID is something that is also inside my database. And if I want to query this, uh, there are multiple things I could do. So I could just copy paste this, go to VS Code uh, to see what information I can get. So I can do curl, give my endpoint here, do customers.json. Uh, so this will give me all the customer information that I have. But instead, let's try and find the very first customer. Take this one and then just copy paste it. So instead of getting all customers, we can also get a single customer. So we'll be using my curl from above. And as you know, a curl is just a way to request an API through your terminal. You can also get a single user and as you can see it returns me the email and the name of this single user which is all perfectly fine and then with stepsam we can actually do something similar if we would go to the stepsam website you can see we have multiple ways to create a graphql api and one of those is by using stepsam import curl so we can use the curl string that we already saw and that tried out in our terminal to import or actually to generate a graphql api with stepsam and going back to my editor, the only thing I need to do here is run stepsam import and then take the exact same curl that I tried before. So copy paste this here and then press enter. So stepsam will now send a request to the API endpoint um, and then generate a GraphQL schema based on the response of that endpoint. As this is a new project, it will also ask me how I like to name my project. So I can do API slash, maybe click, it's called Firebase Demo. So now it will start sending a request to the endpoint from Firebase. It will take the response, and then based on that response, it will generate a GraphQL schema. You can see we have saved the name of our uh, GraphQL endpoint. We have a configuration set that points towards all the index GraphQL files we have. And then we have the generated string here. As you can see, it's all named my query and root, which we can easily change. So we can do get customer by ID. You can see the response is already being typed for me, but let's make this a bit easier. Just, just make this customer. and then name this customer as well. So this way I don't even have to create the GraphQL types for my response because it's already has been generated uh, by sending this request. And of course there's more things you could do. So what I could have done is run steps and import curl and then append the flag query name uh, to be get customer by ID, and I can also set the query type as customer. And I also could have defined the name of the file it should be generated in. So this is something I could have done, and I could actually still do it. So if I run this, it will automatically generate a file with the pre-configured changes I just did here uh, right in my VS Code editor. As you can see, it, we've generated the same string, although this time all the different setup has been done for me. So let's just delete this first thing. Also delete it from the index file, because which is an important step to take, otherwise we would have a duplicate request. And then I can just save this. So the only thing I have to do now to deploy this um, to Stepsend is running Stepsend start. If you're signed up for Stepsend, it will create a private secure endpoint for you. If you haven't signed up, it will create a public endpoint, meaning everyone is able to query this endpoint and get the data from your database. So it is important when you do this to, uh, well, 
to create a private endpoint with Stepsen by creating an account. And also, if you think back to Firebase, we've set the, um, we're starting in test mode, meaning that your data isn't secured right now, which is perfectly fine because we're just doing a demo. So I can continue without logging in, and then Stepsen will generate a GraphQL endpoint for me that is public, available to everyone. So we're going to this endpoint then, and insert it inside my browser. It will take me to a graphical ID. And a graphical ID is a place where you can query GraphQL data from a GraphQL API. And in here, we can explore the data. So we can see we have a query to get a customer by ID. Um, and then it has the fields, names, an email and this returns this customer by id but of course we also want to make this dynamic so instead of returning just the first customer we also want to return different customers so we go back to our schema and then here we need to make one subtle change so we need to add an id field here which is of type id so which can be a string or a number and then in here we have the hard-coded ID for our customer, we can just replace this with ID and then run save. So when you save this, you can see the steps and CLI. You'll see one of our files has changed and it will redeploy this API endpoint. If I would now be going to the graphical ID, I will get an error because of course I need to supply an ID field, which is the ID I just copied from the endpoint. And then I can still get the same data. If we go back to our database, which you can find here, you can see you have other customer information in there as well. An example, this customer. So the only thing we need to do to get this customer using GraphQL is copy pasting their ID, go to the GraphQL interface, run it, and you can see the name Mandy Jones, which is the same as we saw in our database. And then of course, I can also select which fields to return. And if I would maybe, would be making changes here. Everything is very straightforward. And in the same manner, I can also create a endpoint to get all customers in a list. So maybe just copy paste this one. Go to get customers. And then it should return an array of customers. And we also want to get the customers here. If we run save, we can try it out in a graphical IDE and see what's going on. We go back here, just try to refresh the page. Meanwhile, so we go here and we change the query to be get customers. And here we actually don't see any data. So we're seeing email and name are both null. So why is this? If you look at the response of the actual curl, so we could take this response, close the steps and API for a bit, and see what the response looks like. So of course we need to do a curl. You can see the data is returned, not in a array, but actually in a object with key value pairs. So we need to transform the data before we can actually return it. So with steps and we have a option that is called transforms that we can add to our GraphQL schema. So in here, so we have get customers. What we need to do there is set transforms. To be using the object to array transformation, meaning it will transform the object we have here, which is an object with a key value pair and transform it into a array. So save this, restart the Steps and GraphQL API, and then we should be able to get our list of customers. To Steps and Start, this new GraphQL schema will be deployed to the cloud, and then in a few moments we'll be able to use it here as well. So if I would be running this here, you can see name is there, which is actually the object. Um, so what we actually want is to get the value. So we 
new value there. Or we can actually say type customer list is something else. It is name, which is the ID, or uppercase ID. And then it will return the value is actually the customer. So that way there's nothing we have to change. The only thing we need to do is say customer list is what we return here. Just save it. Maybe customer list isn't the best name, but of course you can always change it. So I would just refresh this page. I will then be able to query more information. So I can actually, if I go in here, I can see get customers, I can get value, which is customer email. So we have name and email, and then you can see all the data is returned. And the reason we did this transformation, of course, is because if you would be opening this URL, either here or you can also open it in the browser an example you can see this customer json is a key value pair as we said before so it isn't a regular array that's why we need to do the transformation but luckily by just adding one option to our address to custom directive we are able to create this um, this array that is all the data that we need and also, as we already had the type definitions in GraphQL from our first curl import, we didn't have to retype uh, all this different data. So that's it for today. In a second, second follow-up video, I'll be showing how to get the order data in here as well, combine it with the customer data, and also add new data to the Firebase database. Because with GraphQL, we cannot only do queries, we can also do mutations to insert data into a database which you will be seeing in the second video of this um, two-part video series on creating a GraphQL API for Firebase real-time databases. So thank you, subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you again at the new video.